we'll read um, chapter 15, of course. Uh, but just to kind of not really dive down deeper into Caleb himself, but just to um, kind of sort of uh, try to identify with that character a little bit, if you, if you will. So we'll go ahead and pray. Uh, God, thank you um, for this wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for this wonderful time, Father, uh, to be uh, just, just in the same space as your Holy Spirit, Father. Um, these men, Father, who have uh, come, uh, just like Caleb, you know, just to um, be in your presence, Father, uh, <laughs> in, in faith. Um, so, God, tonight we ask that uh, you just allow us to, uh, allow you to just uh, indwell in us as we open up your word, Father, I ask that you would just speak to each man here uh, where they are uh, individually in their personal relationship with you. I know we're here gathered as a group, but you've created us all as individuals, and your plan is for each one of us um, and also as a group, a corporate group, and moving as an army together. Uh, we all have our own talents. And so let each man, Father, um, tonight um, grow in his talent. And so we ask that you just be with us um, tonight as we study. Um, help, help us to take a deeper look at ourselves and, and learn more about you. And just ask that you just bless the women's Bible study as they try and do the same thing and that your Holy Spirit be with them and we're going to pray for all those who aren't here right now who um, want to be here or are here in spirit but even those who uh, are not here who may be battling in the flesh to be here um, and allowing the flesh to win um, but yet still uh, wanting to be here as Paul says you know, that that, that confusion that, that, that we all face. And so it's not uncommon for any one of them. It's all common to us all. And so we ask you to just bless them in that, in that decision-making process, God, but that you, we know that you will never leave them and just reassure them of that, Father, if they're in that area of their life. And so thank you again for this evening. And so we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to be uh, in the land of Judah. And I believe I'm on 15. Um, so last week we learned of, about Caleb. And, and then so um, here we are. We're going to start in 15. We'll go ahead and read the whole thing. And then um, come back. Yes. Hopefully I can pronounce these names correctly. There's quite a few of them. So we'll begin and then, so this was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families, the border of Edom, and at the wilderness of Zin, southward was the extreme southern boundary. And the southern border began at the shore of the Salt Sea from the bay that faces southward. Then it went out to the southern side of the ascent of Akrabim, passed along to Zim, ascended on the south of the Kadesh Barnea and passed along to Hezron up to the Adar and went around to uh, Karka. And then from there it passed toward Asmon and went into the brook of Egypt and the border ended at the sea. This shall be your southern border. And then five, the east border was the salt sea as far as the mouth of the Jordan and the border of the northern quarter began at the bay of the sea, at the mouth of the Jordan. The border went up to, the, to Beth Hogla and passed north of Beth Arabah, and the border went up to the stone of Bohan, who was the son of Reuben. Then the border went up towards Deber from the valley of Akor, and it turned northward toward Gilgal, which is before the ascent of 
Adamin, which is on the south side of the valley. And the border continued toward the waters of En Shemesh and ended at En Roge. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom to the southern slope of the Jebusite city, which is Jerusalem. And then the border went up to the top of the mountain that lies before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the end of the valley of Rephraim northward. And then the border went around from the top of the hill to the fountain of the water of Naphtoa, and it, it extended to the cities of Mount Ephraim. And the border went around to Baala, which is Kerjeth Jerim. Then the border turned westward from Baala to Mount Seir, passing along to the side of Mount Jerim on the north, which is Chesalon and went down to Beth Shemesh and passed on to Timnah. And Timnah, of course, being where Tamar was from. And the border went out to the side of Ekron northward. And then the border went around to Shekron, passed along, the mount, passed along to Mount Baala and extended to Jabneel. And the border ended at the sea. The west border was the coastline of the Great Sea. This is the boundary of the children of Judah all around according to their families. And in verse 13, now to Caleb, the son of Jephunah, who gave a share among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, namely Kerjeth Arba, which is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak. Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there Shishai, Anami, and Talmai, the children of Anak. Then he went up from there to the inhabitants of the beer, formerly the name of the beer was Kirjath Shafir. And Caleb said, quote, he who attacks Kirjath Shafir and takes it, to him I will give Asha, my daughter, as wife. So Athenael, the son of Kenaz, who was the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him, Asha, his daughter, as wife. Now it was so, when he came to him, that he persuaded, when she came to him, that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. So she dismounted her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you wish? She answered, Give me a blessing, since you have given me land in the south. Give me also springs of water. So, she, so he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. In verse 20, this was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah according to their families. The cities at the limits of the tribe of the children of Judah toward the border of Edom in the south were Kabzil, Eder, and Jag Jag Jagur, Kena, Dim, Monai, Adodai, Kedesh, Hazer, uh, Ethnan, uh, Ziph, Telem, Bealoth, Hazar, Hadata, Kerioth, Hezron, which is Hazar, and Ab, Amon, uh, Shema, uh, Molada, Hazar, Hada, Hezmon, Beth, and Pelet. Hazar, Shuel, Beersheba, Bez Jota, Bala, Ezim, Ezim, and then Etoed, Chesil, Homa, Ziglag, Mat, Manna, Sansana, Lebeoth, uh, Shehem, Aim, and Remna. All the cities were 29 with their villages. In the lowland, Estao, Zora, Ashna, uh, Zanoa, Egami, Tapua, Enam, Jaruth, Abdulam, Soka, and Azakah, Sharim, Adithaim, Gedera, the Geder Orothim, 14 cities with their villages. Zena, Hadadash, Meggal, Gad, Delian, Mezpah, Joktil, I'm sorry, Joktil, Lakish, Baskath, Eglon, Kabon, Lamas, Ketlesh, Gederoth, Beth, Dagon, Neymar, and Makada, 
16 cities with their villages. Libna, Ether, Ashan, Jephthah, Hashanah, Zig, Ib. It's a lot of them, right? Kela, Ezer, and Marisha. Nine cities with their villages. Ekron with its towns and villages. From Ekron to the sea, all that lay near. Ashdod with their villages. Ashdod with its towns and villages. Gaza and its towns and villages as far as the brook of Egypt and the great sea with its coastline. And in the mountain country, Shamir, Jatir, and Sokha. Uh, Danath, Kerjeth, Kesana, which is the beer, and Nab, Es, Demo, Amin, Anin, Laoshin, Holan, and Gilo, eleven cities with their villages: Arab, Dumna, Eshiam, Janem, Beth, Tabato, Abeka, Humta. And if I'm not pronouncing them right, you let me know. Kajer, Ara, which is Hebron, and Zir, nine cities with their villages: Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Juta. Zezreel, Jodin, Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timnah, ten cities with their villages. Hahu, Beth, Zer, and Gedor, Maoth, Beth, Anna, and Ektakon, six cities with their villages. Kerjeth, Baal, which is the Kerjeth, Jerim, and Reba, two cities with their villages. And in the wilderness, Beth, Araba, uh, Meden, and Sakata. Nebshan and the city of Salt, and in Gadi, which is six cities with their villages. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah, could not drive them out. But the Jebusites dwell with one children, with, with the children of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. And so if you go on to chapter 16, the ending of that kind of says the same thing, is they did not drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in the Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell, but I'm not going to go into that. So, I mean, we're going to try to keep it short. There's, when I first read this, um, of course, as, as, as a, um, somebody who's really not really versed in the Bible, I think, you know, oh, man, here we go, you know, all these cities, you know, all these cities, man, you know, what does this mean, what does this mean, what does this mean? You know, and I wonder, I say, God, why are you having me, you know, talk about something like this? I don't have any idea about any of this stuff. It'd be best for Steve Kyle or, or, or Nick or Tom or somebody, you know, somebody who's more well-versed in these things than I am. But um, I think that when you, and I mentioned those guys, I don't know why, but when you watch those guys, though, you, you kind of get an appreciation, and Denny, you get an appreciation for the amount of study it takes to really know or to understand uh, what these things are. And so I um, try to, um, I don't know if it's be serious or try to be, I guess, more dedicated to uh, understanding or having a deeper uh, study time when looking at it. I may not understand it or uh, anything like that, but as I was uh, trying to understand it or try to try to have something to present to the Bible study and listening to Joe last week, you know, there is, and of course, a lot of prayer and some fasting, right? A lot of fasting. You know, God will always bring something to you. Um, and, it, and you may think in your flesh that it's not important, but then, you know, it, it, it can be, it's important to your growth as, as a follower of Christ. It may, you know, it may not be something earth shattering to the people that you're speaking to or anything like that, but it'll always be something new to you to open up new doors for you. And so, so when I, um, there are three things here in this chapter that are important, I guess, as some of the people would say. So um, the gift of the um, land to Asha and then her um, requesting the upper springs. And then it would be the, um, um, well, that would be after the fact that he was taking the land, was 
going to take the land of Kyrgyz. So he, I guess the word would be delegated or delegated that responsibility to who anyone who would want him to take his daughter as a wife. And so Othenio uh, picked up the sword for that. And um, that would be another milestone in this chapter. And then the other milestone would be at the end where you see that the children of Israel, as my brother Steve so uh, um, eloquently uh, taught in his chapter 12, that you know this um, willingness to just assimilate rather than just than, than just stand on the power of God and fight against the wiles of the world. And so um, uh, we, we see that a lot. And I, I think what God has spoken to me about is that in this chapter is that you know we can um, I, when I was reading along, there's this word um, uh, abstract, um, having an, an abstract relationship with Christ. Um, and as I was studying this and listening to Joe and other guys last week, you know, I, I pray and, and was fascinated about, you know, is my relationship with Christ abstract or is it personal? Um, when I look at Caleb, um, as I was thinking this morning, I ran out of time. Uh, we were discussing, you know, Caleb's uh, origination and the tribe that he belonged to. Um, and so I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but um, Caleb goes into um, Egypt with the children of Israel. And he comes out of Egypt uh, with the children of Israel in the Exodus. And then he also wanders around in the desert with the children of Israel. And he goes through all of that with the children of Israel. But Caleb wasn't a child of Israel. Um, and so all of us, the scripture that reminded me of that was, um, there's quite a few, but Romans 1 and 16, where it says that, uh, I am not ashamed, Paul says to the um, to the Greeks or the Romans, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So when we're continuing to look at Caleb, all, I, 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 I mean, all of these teachings that we've heard so far, you know, I, I'm reminded first of Rahab, who um, had already heard what God had done for the children of Israel. And Rahab uh, believed, her family was believers. They weren't Jewish, but they ended up being in the lineage of Christ. And so she ended up, I guess you would say, identifying with the children of Israel as well. And then you have, of course, Caleb, who was not a child of Israel, but also identified with the children of Israel. Um, and this scripture, meaning that the this promise was promised to the Jew first. And as Pastor Dave, again, he has taught many on many occasions, you know, that, you know, we were invited to the gospel, you know. And in that invitation, it's easy to find yourself being privileged to have such an, such an honor to be a follower of Christ. And in that privilege, there's a tendency to have an abstract relationship with the Lord. We think that we all think that somehow 
we're good enough and that we deserve it. When in fact, when you look at, and as I was saying earlier, I'm not sure if when you look at Genesis, I mean, some of you guys can probably know this. When you look at the book of Genesis and you see this area kind of jumping ahead where uh, Caleb gives this land to his daughter, um, remember, I was remembering that, you know, this is where Abraham's journey began. You know, just this area where he gave her this south land, this desert area where they did most of their, they call this the um, nomad area, where they did most of their back and forth, their traveling. And um, Abraham and Lot were in this same area and they split off in this area. One, Lot went down towards Sodom where there were springs. The Bible in Genesis 13, 12, 13, and 14 kind of spells that out. He went down, if you look at a map, he goes down by these springs. And it's just so ironic to me that the Bible would name all of this stuff, all these lands that were divided up amongst these people but Caleb's daughter gets the land where the journey first began. And she also gets the springs that Lot decided to take. You know, um, that was interesting to me because I was wondering, like everybody else, why would you put that passage there? You know, why, not, not questioning, but you know, is, it is for the reader to try to make the connection. Um, and the first thing that came to my mind was, you know, um, here is this lady, we can, I guess you can talk about in the absence of male leadership, women step up, I don't know, I mean, that's a whole nother subject, but here she gets this dry, dusty land, and she asks, for water, kind of like us, you know, we're, before we come to Christ, before I came to Christ, I would say that my life was in a dry and dusty place, and it was the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the water, that brings me to where I am today. So, I mean, you don't have to go with me with that, you know, just kind of where I was um, in trying to um, listen to the Holy Spirit as far as, you know, um, this passage being right here in the middle of um, this chapter. Um, and so with that, you know, it talks about our faith. And we have Caleb, again, going into uh, Egypt as a as a as a you know a slave eventually and coming out God rescuing him and the children of Israel and he's coming out you know and then so what how does that match with Christ you know um, we have Christ who is and does identify with the children of um, who have been mistreated, who have, um, who are hungry, who are poor, um, who are, I guess you would call it, less fortunate. And so for us, you know, it's important that we be like Caleb in so many aspects and, and more like Christ if you can be like Christ, but you can certainly be like Caleb because Caleb was just a human being for real. You know, he, he wasn't God in word. You know, he was someone, I think, it wasn't clear, who actually chose to identify with the children of Israel. That was his decision. And, I'm, and Steve can probably knows more than me, but I have to look at it and see that. So when 
Abraham goes to fight this war with these five kings and comes out victorious, when he was giving his honor or his gift to the king of Salem, the king of Salem told Abraham to return the people, set the people free. I'm wondering if Caleb's family was part of that, those people who were captured and set free. I mean, it just all going in my mind, you know. So, and in that, like Rahab, he witnessed God in his glory and decided that he wanted to be identified with these people because he, through all of the hardship, as the Bible points out, he didn't give up. When, when you're not, when it, it's, I think it's easy to pull yourself away when you don't have any connection to a person or a thing. It's like say, okay, well, you know, I'm done with that. You know, I can just walk away. Let them go through that. I'm going back home, you know. But he didn't. And so for us, you know, it's it, they're here at the bridge right now. The problem with Trump to think. <laughs> but you know, it's sort of like a dry season. Right, um, and a lot of people that I talk to are concerned that the numbers are going down. You know, they're like, "Where is everybody?" You know, it used to be a lot of enthusiasm around here, and it's not that anymore. And what's going on? And you know, and. It's like Caleb, you know. Um, you know we, we out here in this dry and dusty place. We out here making bricks with this straw. Man, we're getting beat up and torn down. And, you know, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> I'm ready to go, you know. Um, and, and we see that here. So it's, it's important that we make sure that people understand that the relationship with Christ is not something that is abstract. It's something personal. We, we say that a lot, but I don't think we really emphasize what it means as a personal relationship. Because I always remember that Christ identifies with the poor. And I'm pretty sure everybody here ain't been rich all their life. And so, if you've ever been poor, if you've ever been mistreated, or if you've never been any of those things, somehow, some way, you have to find a way to connect to people who are or who have been. Because otherwise, your relationship with them is going to be abstract. And so, therefore, the Bible says your, your relationship with Christ is going to be abstract. So it's not real. So if you have a hard time identifying with other people, right, find it a way to try and identify with other people, just like Caleb. Now, also in... Uh, Genesis 14, we see um, Abraham and his wife, how do you say it, Sarai? Sarai. When he told, her, told um, the king of that, what was it, that that was his sister. And then um, we also see in this area, Othenia being given the responsibility or the hand of his cousin, right? Because that was, Othenio was Kedes' 
son Kedaz was Caleb's brother. So Asha was his cousin. I heard somebody say, well, it sounds crazy, but it wasn't weird back then. They were from West Virginia, but it's okay. Trust me, I'm from West Virginia, and I got a few cousins, but I never married them. But, uh, so he ends up marrying his cousin. And then Othiniel ends up being uh, the first judge in that area. And Othiniel was judge for 40 years. Then after Othiniel dies, the land knew no rest. And so, again, why would God put that there? Why would he choose, why would Othiniel step up? That's my cousin. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that for my cousin. I don't know, he loved her, I suppose, you know. But no, nonetheless, he stepped up as a warrior in a time that needed a king or a judge, you know. And so that, again, as men of Christ, that will be us. One, to identify, not to ever forget those who are less fortunate than ourselves and also to step up when it's time to step up, you know? So if you hear someone here complaining or whatever about what's going on at the bridge or whatever, you know, that should be an alarm to all of us. It's time to step up. It's time to step up. The harvest is now. It's time to step up and do more than what you think you are capable of doing. Because really when it boils down to it, we, 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 we limit ourselves on what we're capable of doing, right? Like the guys who, like myself, who make excuses for not being here on Tuesday night, you know? I limit myself on what I can actually do. You know, I say, well, my wife needs me. And then the Holy Spirit says, yeah, well, so does the body of Christ. But I make the personal decision to have an abstract relationship with Christ and go home and be with my wife. You know? I'm just being transparent. You know? But uh, it happens. You know, we can, like Caleb should always put God first. You know, it's more than just a saying i tell you what happened. As I was going through this chapter, I was in a dry place. I've been in a dry place for a while. So I, I called one of, our, one of the pastors here, and I was talking to one of the pastors, and they listened to what I had to say. I knew what I had to say was just, you know, hot water. I knew that, but they listened. And he said, well, just fast, man. I remember listening to Pastor Chuck. Pastor Chuck said, I don't fast on the food, man. He said, because I like to eat. He said, plus, you know, people who fast on food, they go around and say, oh, yeah, I'm fasting right now, man. I'm so hungry. I'm fasting right now. I said, well, I got to figure out something for me. And so, you know, I had been going home at night watching the news. You know, I mean, man, I would turn it on, man. I'd sit down, and I'd watch it, and I'd watch it, man. I'd watch it. I mean, I'd watch it probably till, I don't know, midnight every day, just, just watching the news, man, getting up, going to work, you know, reading the Internet, man, and just trying to, you know, trying to figure out why in the world is all of this going on? Why am I so upset with all this that's going on in the world? You know, and whatever. And he said to me, he said, just fast. And so that to me meant stop looking at the television. And so since then, I haven't looked at any television 
And every time I think about it, I didn't think that it would be so easy to just kind of turn, you know, I said, and look at it and just kind of get, get a glance. But every time I would think about it, I'd say, I'm breaking my fast. I'm breaking my fast, you know. Not that anything serious, but just something really small. But just to put God first um, and get back to that sweet spot that just listening to the Holy Spirit to strengthen me when I don't really feel like it. Um, because a lot of times, I think we can get so distracted with what's going on around us that we don't allow God to indwell with his spirit in us to strengthen us to move forward to whatever the next thing is. It could be a difficult situation like Caleb and get discouraged. Asha was given some dry land but she had enough with her all to say, hey, I need some water. <laughs> hey, man, I need some water. Man, listen, there's water over there. I need some of that water. That's like you and I. We need the influence of the Holy Spirit all the time because we can find ourselves in a dry place at the blink of an eye, man. It don't take long. It don't take one little small incident to get you all torn up. you like this, whew. I thought I was a follower of Jesus, and I'm about to blow a gasket around here, man. You know, and so, so if I have any advice for anybody today, man, if you don't fast, I wasn't a believer. If you don't pray regularly, you know, do it. Do it. Do something. Do something to draw yourself to the Lord. Pastor Nick is in Daniel, and Daniel prayed to the Lord on a regular basis. You know, um, they didn't have television or radio, and so they had a lot of other distractions. But those we read about here, Caleb, wholeheartedly, the Bible says, followed the Lord. It says it six times, wholeheartedly followed the Lord. And so we should all um, look to be that way, okay? And so um, I'm going to end right there. Is that okay? Yep. And then so if anybody have any questions or any comments, I welcome comments or dialogue. And so you want to break it off into a couple of groups or just talk as one group. I know I'm supposed to be leading this group, but uh, uh, yeah, let's just stay as one group, and then we can just have a conversation. There's only a few of us in here anyway, and then uh, we'll pray. I'll pray first, and then we can break off, I guess. Yeah. So, gracious Father, thank you um, so much for this evening. Thank you for um, being here with us, God. Um, not allowing me to go off on some tangent. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm totally grateful. And I pray that the men here were, are blessed uh, by the reading of your word, Father, and that um, there was something in there that uh, um, they, would, they can grow by. Um, I pray for encouragement uh, for them all, God, and uh, for all of us to make sure that our relationship with you is not abstract, something that we can just uh, talk about and not really be about, but just really be about it, or at least work towards being about it. We don't really get it right all the time, but at least help us to put that first in our hearts and in our minds, that we are focusing, focusing on you and not allowing all these other things to be a distraction for us And to be more like you and to, as an example, like Caleb, to just follow you wholeheartedly in all that we do, in our studies, in our relationship with others, in our relationship with unbelievers. 
so that they will know, God, that you are real because they, they watch us. They know that we follow you. And it is a, it is a, real, it is a real change. And so we ask you to just be with us tonight, God, and bless those again who are not here. Um, we ask you to just keep them safe with their families and uh, Pastor David and his family, God, and all the pastors and elders and deacons and all the people that go to church here or call this their church home, God. I ask you to just um, be with them wherever they are and bless them, keep them safe until we meet again. In Jesus' name I pray this. Everybody say amen.